A very powerful man once said, every day is a gift. It's just, does it have to be a pair of socks today? In this episode of Myth Busting and Butt Hurting, I will be testing the myth that coiling your coax will create an RF choke, resulting in a high SWR, thereby reducing your radio's number of bars and possibly even damaging your radio. So once again, I will be doing the dirty work so that you don't have to get off of your couch. Speaking of FARs, a lot of these so-called experts have never even heard of the term FARs, which as everyone knows is a scientific reference of distance. The more FARs your radio has, the farzer it can transmit. Thankfully for all of those experts, one of my supporting channel members, Scott Hayes, took the time to look up the technical definition of FARs allow me to share it with you. Bars, an undescribed distance of measure that has little or no real bearing due to the variables innately ingrained in the suffering of the testing. Thank you, Scott Hayes. Now, hopefully all of the experts can join along in the conversation and understand what it is we're talking about when we say the word or we use the term Fars. So before I begin with the myth busting and butt hurting testing, let me explain how this is going to work so that we can avoid any confucklement and hopefully prevent a few stupid comments from the experts that don't actually pay attention. I am going to do three tests. I will test the SWR on an inexpensive, low quality cable such as this, and I will then test the SWR on a much higher quality cable, such as this LMR 400, which, as we all know, is not necessarily the best cable in the world, but it is a very good cable, a lot better than this inexpensive cable. It doesn't matter, though, because for all those experts, we're not testing the cable, we're testing the SWR of the cable when it is straight versus when it is coiled up. So I will do two tests on each cable, one uncoiled and one coiled up. I will measure the SWR on each of those to see if coiled versus uncoiled makes any difference, as all the experts have been telling us it will for years. I will be doing the test in a real world way, meaning that I will ball up and coil up the coils by hand, sloppily, as you would find in a vehicle, not perfectly coiled up in a laboratory way as though this was a laboratory experiment, because most people, when using their radios, don't use their radio or configure or set up their radio in a laboratory. Most people actually use their radio in the real world. This will be a real world test, not a worthless laboratory test because most people don't use their radios in a laboratory. Some people should remember that. To do the measuring of the SWR, I will be using my Surecom SW102 SWR meter. Now, as we all know, this is not the most accurate best SWR meter in the world, but it is plenty accurate for our purposes so that we will be able to see if there is any significant difference in a coiled versus uncoiled SWR reading. Now, some experts may point out that we would need a much more sensitive and precise meter. And if that was the case to measure those tiny little differences, then it doesn't really matter, does it? Because in the real world, we don't care about tiny little differences. We're looking for that big difference that all of the experts have been telling us about in coiled versus uncoiled cables the kind of big difference that would damage our radio or reduce the number of FARs that our radio has. For the signal, I will be using my Wuxin Ocean KGS88G. This is a pre-production radio that Wuxin sent me for testing. I'll be doing a full review of this soon. I will connect the radio to the meter. The meter will then be connected to the coax, coiled versus uncoiled and I will use the meter to take a reading. I'll be transmitting on GMRS channel 15 on a setting of high power, which on this radio is approximately four to five watts. 
So first up, I will be testing the inexpensive thin cable in an uncoiled position. It's not perfectly straight, but there are no coils and no bends, and this cable is approximately 15 feet long. So this will be our baseline uncoiled measurement of the inexpensive coax. And we get a reading of, actually far better than I thought, 1.01 to 1. That is a near-perfect SWR. I'm using a magnetic mount Nagoya UT72G antenna on a metal pan for a ground plane. That's actually a surprisingly good SWR. We will now test the more expensive LMR 400 type cable in its native uncoiled position, which is much more difficult to do because this cable is much more stiff. It's like dealing with a broomstick. This cable is 25 feet long. And remember that it doesn't matter that the cable length is different from the cheaper coax because we're not comparing the two coaxes to each other. We're comparing the same coax to itself in a coiled versus spread out or uncoiled position. So our baseline for the more expensive LMR 400 type cable, 1.05 to 1. Very, very good also. We will now begin the coiled up measurements. This is our inexpensive cable. As you can see, it is coiled up in a real world fashion over half of the length, about three quarters of the full length is coiled up here, as you can see, much as you would find it under the seat of a vehicle in the real world, not in a laboratory. And I've already forgotten what the baseline measurement was because I didn't write it down, but I do remember it was very low. Let me clear the previous reading so as to prevent any confusion. And let's see now what we get for our inexpensive coiled up SWR. 1.01 .01 to 1. Virtually no difference at all. Now I will be testing the more expensive LMR 400 type cable, which is very difficult to get coiled up. It's like trying to coil up a piece of uncooked spaghetti. I've got three quarters of the length of the cable coiled up. Just as with the previous measurement, I don't remember what it was, but I remember it was very low. So with the coiled LMR 400 type cable, we get 1.00. That is, wow. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, it is not often that you will hear me sound surprised. I am surprised the SWR actually went down. Not by a lot, but the SWR is lower. That is a, ladies and gentlemen, it will be rare that you ever find an SWR that perfect. Now it is likely that the fact that it went, I, you know what? I don't know why it went down. The point, however, is clear. Coiling the cable did not increase the SWR as the experts have been telling us for years would happen if we use a coiled cable. Now, no doubt we'll see comments saying, well, try that with a VHF rig at 50, 100 megigahertz. It doesn't matter. We're talking about GMRS and GMRS radios. And when all of the experts told us that if we coiled our cable, it would cause the high SWR, there was no mention made of, oh, only if you're on a VHF rig with blah, 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 blah. They were talking about our CB radios and our GMRS radios, whatever. I can't speak for CB radio, but at least in this case with GMRS, it made no difference, as you saw with your very own ocular holes. Now, please allow me to clarify one very important thing. I am not saying that you should coil up your cables. In both of my butthurt provoking videos about how transmitting with an antenna will not damage your radio, some people left comments on that video and in other places where that video was posted, like on Facebook and Reddit and in online forums, saying things like, that idiot says everyone should transmit without an antenna. What an idiot. When in fact, 
I never said that, and in both of those videos, I specifically said, do not do this. And yet, those experts, in their fit of butthurtedness, make up lies. Or maybe they were just too lazy or ADD-tarded to watch the whole video, and maybe they didn't hear or weren't capable of paying attention to hear when I said, don't do this. So for the sake of all the experts in their butthurt rage, allow me to make this very clear. I did not say you should roll up your cables. What I'm saying is, is that a coiled up cable, as I showed, will not necessarily cause a high SWR or, or damage your radio as the experts have been telling us for years. But be aware that coiling up or balling up your cable, especially the less expensive or lower quality type of cable, may, in theory, on paper, in a book, hurt or damage the cable itself. It could wear out the reflective shielding jacketing on the outside. You could even actually break the center conductor. And in some cases, it could even possibly, potentially, in theory, induce additional RF electricity noise or static. So while coiling up your cable may not be a good idea, it appears that it will not affect your SWR.